In late May 1945, US reconnaissance overflights of a Japanese airfield near Tokyo appeared to show a new aeroplane. Tachikawa was the home of the Imperial Japanese Army's Aviation Technical Research Institute, so it was not surprising that a new type of aircraft was spotted there. The indistinct images showed a four engine aircraft with a wingspan of over 100 feet. Was it some kind of new bomber? But what the Americans didn't yet realize was that the new aircraft was in fact a rather old and familiar one. What they were in fact looking at was none other than the fabled Boeing B 17 Flying Fortress. But how did B 17s end up in the Japanese Army Air Force? To answer that, we need to go back to the Philippines in late 1941. The Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor in Hawaii on the 7th of December 1941 was not an isolated event, but rather part of a complex series of attacks throughout Asia. Among many different places, the Japanese forces also struck at Shanghai, the British colony of Hong Kong, and landed in force in southern Thailand and northern British Malaya with the aim of eventually capturing Singapore. A few hours after bombing Pearl Harbor, Japanese aircraft also struck the main U.S. air base at Clark Field in the Philippines, knocking out most of the American aircraft there and destroying American strategic air power in the region. Among the aircraft at Clark were 17 B 17 Flying Fortresses, and all were either damaged or destroyed. In the time that followed before a Japanese invasion of the Philippines, U.S. air mechanics managed to assemble one flyable B 17 from among the 17 wrecks. There were other B 17s on the Philippines, 20 were at Del Monte Field on Mindanao, and they survived the initial Japanese bombing raids. However, by the 10th of December, due to enemy action and mechanical problems, only 12 of the B 17s remained in flyable condition. They were evacuated at once to the safety of Australia. The remaining grounded though intact B 17s were ordered destroyed, lest they have fallen intact into enemy hands. These wrecks were captured by the advancing Japanese, who wanted to evaluate the B 17. They collected together as many parts as they could find and started to rebuild. Soon they had one flyable B 17 D, with rising sun markings painted over its USAAF insignia. The flying fortress was flown to Japan. Then, during the invasion of Java in the Dutch East Indies, the Japanese captured 15 wrecked B 17 E's. Forcing captured Royal Netherlands East Indies Army Air Force personnel to help them, they reconstructed four damaged B 17s. Two of these aircraft were also taken to Japan for evaluation. It was a complex flight from Java via Singapore, recently captured from the British. A support aircraft flew with them, a Nakajima L 2 D, a Japanese copy of the US C 47 Skytrain, plus fighter escorts. Every component and system on the B 17s was carefully studied by the Japanese. A captured Norden bomb site was put aboard one of the B 17s. Certain systems were copied and manufactured by the Japanese for their own aircraft, and in fact, improved versions were built, including the Norden bomb site. In autumn 1943, the three Japanese B 17s were based at Fusa Airfield near Tachikawa, appearing in military training films. Japanese fighter pilots also used them to practice intercepts. In early 1944, one of the B 17 E's was badly damaged during takeoff and permanently grounded. The fates of these captured flying fortresses is not clear. The damaged B 17 E was last seen at Uromagawa Airfield just north of Fusa. The B 17 photographed by U.S. Air Reconnaissance vanished when the base was photographed again a few days later. The third B 17 may have been destroyed by fire at Torozawa Air Base during an American air raid. Interestingly, the hangar also contained a Junkers Ju 87 Stuka, one of two examples of this famous machine purchased by the Japanese from the Germans in 1937 and shipped to Japan. When U.S. occupation forces arrived in Japan, no trace was ever found of the three B 17s. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share, and also help support my channel at PayPal and Patreon. 
Details in the description box.